So hello and welcome back and in this video we'll be taking a look at the context API in react which is a very good way to manage your state inside of react. So context API is basically a way in which you can store your state inside of a file okay inside of a file and that state is accessible to um, other components around your react app so and yeah it's it's too easy it can be a replacement to redux which is something which many people don't like because of the because of the actual setup that you have to do with redux so there are a lot there is a lot of boilerplate that you have to write with redux and the process is also pretty cumbersome but with context api it's very simple let's get started so i have a react app it's a very simple and basic react app i just uh, created it with the help of create react app so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to npm scripts and we're going to run the start script which just means npm start okay npm run start or npm start you can create this react app using npx create react app or yarn create react app so you can use any of these commands now i hope you have some basic understanding of react and hooks because we are not using class based components here we'll be using functional components which is the better way to go and it's also easier so i think it has started now on localhost 3000 now it will start um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out some files we're not gonna need so let's go to index.js first of all i'm gonna remove web vitals because it's a simple app uh, it's a simple uh, tutorial where we are going to learn some uh, what do we say learn some basic and simple context api okay what's context api so we are going to remove everything inside of here okay and just keep an h1 that says hello world okay nothing much let's go ahead and remove the test file let's remove the logo from here and from here as well and that's it i guess okay let's just remove the app css file as well because we don't need that and we're done with it also we don't need the react import as of react 17 so we use jsx transform so that's a lot more better now because we edited some files it gave us the error but now when we refresh it uh, reverts it back okay so the first step is to create the context file now what I usually do is I go into the SRC folder and I create a new folder called context because it is not necessary you will have only one file containing all of the state you might want to split those state inside of files inside of other files like for example you have something called main data okay what you want to call the main data that you want to store and the other side you have uh, like you're fetching something from an API and then you're storing that okay so it's good to manage state inside of different different files so I'm gonna create a new file and since we are working with only one file let's just name it main context dot JSX now I usually work with dot JSX because uh, VS code provides IntelliSense for .jsx you can also name it .js now if if I have a JavaScript file and I want to use JSX it's pretty simple I can just click this JavaScript down below I can select the language but I like to work with JSX a bit more a bit more than JavaScript so now we have one file which is the main context now the first thing is you need to import something from react okay and here we're gonna export two components the first one will be the context and the second one will be the provider now I'll explain you in a second what that means so first of all we need to import something from react so let's see we need to import create context and use state now create context 
to create a context that's a function and use state to create some state okay some state variables first thing that we will write is export const and then we're going to say main provider you can name it anything okay main provider no we will name it main context now actually you can name it anything but it's the convention to name the first component uh, in the end it should be context and the second one should be provider okay so this will equal this will be equal to nothing but create context and that's it for the first component because we are exporting it and now let's create the second component export const and that will be main our main provider okay and we're gonna put this uh, we're gonna make this component an arrow function and simply we will return something but let's keep it empty for now okay here we go so let's have some state now you can have state inside of this file it's pretty simple you just create your own state variables let's say I create some state if you don't know what is state and how it works I have a video on it you can just check it out I'll put the link in the cards so this is let's name let's say it's the name and set name okay and use state let's say I want to say max okay so which is the default value now once I have this state and I want to use this state inside of uh, my whole app it's pretty simple first of all you need you are exporting this and this okay so what you need to do is just uh, render out the main context dot provider okay so we are going to wrap our whole app inside this main provider component okay once we are exporting this right so we are going to wrap our whole app inside of this component and then we'll get access to the state so main context dot provider is a component that is from main context okay it's it's a part of main context dot provider is uh, a property so this is a component and we are going to take in the children okay and we will render out the children as is and we will save the file so what we are doing right now is we are creating the main context that is the main uh, that is the context and then we are creating the main provider which is a component that we are going to wrap our app on so i am going to go to index.js and i'm quickly going to import that so i'm going to import something from dot slash context slash main context and why are we importing uh, something i mean why are we importing it like this because we are exporting two things we are not exporting one thing okay so we want to import the main provider and we just need to wrap our app inside of main provider that's it so let's put uh, okay let's put this app inside of the main provider I don't know what's wrong with my keyboard shortcuts that's it and now uh, we, sh we should not have access to our state okay for now so once we get to the main provider what you need to do is go into your component where you want state and then import use context from react okay and also the other component that we had so if I go to main context this component so let's import something from dot slash uh, context slash main context so we need to import nothing but main context now what you need to do is you want the state accessible to another other components right so just pass in the value prop here and then put double curly braces now actually you don't need to put double curly braces in the value prop you need to pass in an array or an object with the state that you want to be accessible to other components so if i pass in an array and then i have to destructure the array which is quite bad because um, then you have to 
keep the track of the order and other things so i don't usually work with the arrays but the objects so i can just pass in name and set name that's it so you pass in both of these things inside the value prop save this file let's go here and first of all you need, we need to use context so let's say const i mean it's a pretty simple thing const and then we're going to destructure it we're going to say use context and then we will pass in the main context right over here that's the setup you need okay the first thing is the the file okay this is the context file that you need to uh, need to have so what you have is const and then you can just uh, destructure those items that you want from the state okay so we are we want the name and the set name so it's pretty simple we import the name and the set name we don't import it but we just do that and then what we're gonna do is we are quickly going to render that out so in the div let's put an h1 and the name and then we use curly braces and then we're gonna put the name okay and let's take a look should work i don't know why it doesn't work but let's reload so as you can see name is max because we have access to the name that is from the context right from the context and once you're done with the setup you can just create another uh, whatever state you want so first off let's just create some state okay i'm gonna go ahead and wipe off this thing so i'm not gonna uh, get anything from that so let's create something like uh, a pretty simple thing uh, not uh, nothing for now inside of our template but let's go inside of here and let's create some state so i'm gonna create a state called people and set people we we won't actually need set pick set people but let's see okay so hmm or let's just say yeah no problem so this is going to be use state this is going to be an array of objects so we're going to put the name so the name let's say the first name is max the age is 20 and let's see above 20 is gonna be false okay so we have these things so let's replicate this object a couple of times like three times and i'm gonna go ahead and name this one uh florin i don't know the age so let's make it 25 and this will be true and let's name this one james and i hope it's 26 anything and true okay so we have that stuff and let's now export or set the value to our people and set people that's how it is okay hit save and now let's go ahead and get the people and set people people set people that we exported from there and let's go inside of this div now let's put a javascript expression where we're gonna map through the people's array okay if you don't know we are just mapping through it and then we'll get each wait a second we'll get each person which will be an object so let's just do that okay let's return some jsx so i'm gonna put this uh i'm gonna be using fragments or let's just create it a div with the class name of person okay as simple as that so let's put the h1 and we're gonna put the person dot name inside of that one because we have a name property Ooh, wait a second we missed those commas here okay so we have the name property we have the age property and then we have the above 20 property okay so we're gonna put the person name and h2 and then we're gonna put the person dot age and let's also label them a bit so name and we put the age and then in the end let's put an h3 is above 20 
and then you uh, let's put a JavaScript expression so let's say person dot above 20 if it is true then we're gonna output uh, yes yes else we're gonna output no and that's it okay let's go back to our app and it should reload I don't know why it is not reloading for some reason but here you go so you have name max you have age 20 is about 20 no is about 20 yes is above 20 yes because you have the age right over here so that's how you use state if you have something like an array of objects now it will give us an error inside of here that hey every everything inside of uh, when you map over something it should have the key prop we don't have the key prop it's fine for now because we, we're not building an application a big application or something like that it's just a demo of context api so as you can see that's it now i hope this helped you a bit you this uh you can just create your own state whatever you want whatever you like okay this is the this is just one state variable you can create more and more state variable you can just call the set people function that we are importing right here anywhere in the app and then pass in the new value so that will actually change or that will that will modify the people state okay and when the state gets modified the, uh, the UI updates so that's a pretty cool thing uh, I hope you learned a lot from this and I hope this video helped you please share it to others who want to learn context API or who are just pretty uh, bored with the prop drilling okay so thank you for watching